Right today, we're going to be talking about bloom boosters. What they are, are they worth it? Are they safe to use in your grow? Come on, Hi C, you ready to get into it? Absolutely, but before we get into it... Come on, this video is sponsored by Real Growers Recharge. If you want stronger, healthier plants, you got to check out Recharge. For bigger roots and bigger fruits, check it out, realgrowers.com. All right, let's get into it. Okay, come on, bloom boosters. Okay, Scott, what are bloom boosters? This is something new to me. All right, well, bloom boosters, when I think of a bloom booster, I'm thinking of a P and K, a phosphorus and potassium boost. And as you go into flowering, you've got your growth, your vegetative growth stage where you're growing green leaves and green, you know, volume. And then you're going into flowering where you're trying to grow these flowers and you're trying to make them big, heavy, dense and filled with trichomes. So to do that, you use a PK booster or traditionally you'd use a bloom booster, which is a PK booster, a phosphorus and potassium. And that's going to bulk the buds up and that's going to uh, make them hard and weigh a lot as well. Okay. A real quick question. Grow dots automatically switches to giving more P and K sure. during flower. And I've seen other nutrient calendars or schedules that do the same so yep. why is it that we need a bloom booster when it seems like most of the feeding schedules already switch to more p and k in the second half anyways i mean a lot of companies would like you to buy some extra stuff you know <laughs> but honestly yeah that's why they used to give you or that's why a lot of these nutrients are in three parts is because you can add a little bit more p and k when you need it they're supposed to be versatile I guess that doesn't stop them from selling you another bottle of P and K. So it really does depend what nutrient you're using and how you're mixing it, or whether you need a nutrient bloom or a bloom booster or not. Okay. Uh, I've gotten away without using bloom boosters for a very long time and have great quality cannabis. Okay. And you were telling me there's bloom boosters and then there's also bloom additives. Can you kind of explain the difference? Yeah, you know, for years, I've been doing this for 20 something years. And in the beginning, there was just a P and K boost. It was like a zero 50 30. It was uh, phosphorus and potassium, basically. Uh, those were great for bulking up. It was really dangerous, though. You, when you have something a zero 50 30, you know how easy it is to burn your plants with something like that? Mm. Yeah, so those kind of got a bad rap a little bit, but using a little bit more P and K as a boost, yeah, that's definitely a proven science. These additives are interesting things like jasmonic acid and these uh, uh, alcohol esters and just really weird stuff that you really haven't heard of. And honestly, a lot of when you look at the bottles, they don't tell you what's in there because it's proprietary. Mm -hmm. Um I see a lot of stuff. There's that yellow bottle, which is tricantanol. Tricantanol is this natural growth promoting substance, I guess. I don't even know how you'd call it. It's like an alcohol. And uh, it does increase chlorophyll production. It, it lowers the energy it takes for the plant to absorb chlorophyll, and it's able to build itself up. So tricantanol is legit. It's natural. It comes from... I think it comes from beeswax and alfalfa. You know, something like that, man. But it is natural. Okay, and then... I also know that inside of Recharge, there's kelp, and kelp kind of has those same properties. Kelp is loaded. The, the natural PGRs, plant growth regulators, and there's natural ones and there's synthetic ones. Kelp is loaded with natural ones. Kelp is the fastest growing plant in the world. Kelp is a plant, and it's able to just uh, it grabs the nutrients from seaweed, and it's the fastest growing plant in the world. It does that through hormones through auxins all these fancy words auxin cyanokins gibberellins okay okay yeah but those are all growth hormones that allow it to uh, build itself so by taking some of those that's what we do with recharge we take some of those natural pgrs those natural growth hormones the ones that work with the plants that we grow uh yeah and by giving them to them we're able to get a natural uh, a natural boost okay and then i just heard about a synthetic pgr called Paclobutrazol, I believe. I heard there was some safety concerns about Look at some my PGRs. body language, man. I don't know, man. <laughs> man Paclobud has given us a lot of a bad rap. That is something that they use when you go to Home Depot. Uh, you'll see there's ornamental plants. There's plants that are made to to be eaten, edible plants, and then there's ornamental plants. And you would not believe the poisons that are, they are allowed to spray on these ornamental plants in use. Mm -hmm. uh, when you go look, at, whether it's uh, at Home Depot, and you look and you'll see a tray or a rack of plants that they're 
putting out. They all shorten, shorten squats so you can fit a bunch of them on the rack. Mm -hmm. That's what Paclobutrazol was invented for, and it was used for ornamentals. Well, some of the growers back in the day, the free market or black market growers back in the day would use it instead of the plants growing way into the lights. Mm -hmm. uh, they could spray this stuff on there, and then their plants would just grow bigger, fatter, denser buds instead of taking all that energy to grow up. Uh, they would grow and bulk up. The problem was it looked like they were on, it looked like them, them buds were on drugs, man. Mm -hmm. They were just, it was almost like they were on steroids. They were just super hard and dense. Uh, they weighed a lot and they didn't really have that many trichomes on there. It wasn't like just because if the more weight doesn't necessarily mean the more trichomes. And so it was a lesser quality of, of uh, end product. Okay. So it was, Bigger and denser, but that so more biomass, but not necessarily more oil, sure. more psychoactive chemicals. And think about you know ten years ago, what were people getting paid on weight? Mm -hmm. Now, what are people getting paid on? How well Quality. squishes? You yeah. know how well you know people want it actually or not? Okay, and then safety concerns. I I saw that that paclobutrazol might have carcinogenic properties that might actually be bad for you to consume it. Yeah, yeah, there's uh, a lot of these products, and that's why they don't... Uh, Paclo is one that's already known. You don't use Paclo unless you don't really care about the people that are, are consuming your product. Mm -hmm. uh, but there are all, sor are all sorts of tricks with these products. When you look at mo most Bloom Boosters, they're very expensive, and they don't really tell you what is in them. Mm -hmm. So it is one of those things I know from just dealing with all these authorities that they care what you claim is in there. They don't test for the stuff that you're not telling them is in there. And that's, that's kind of shady, you know? Right. Okay. So overall, Bloom Boosters seem to maybe have some desirable things, but also you might want to stay away from them. A PK boost, you need more phosphorus and potassium in flowering. If your nutrient does not provide that, if you're using a, a, you know, some kind of simple nutrient and you need to uh, provide more phosphorus and potassium, a bloom booster, great. If you already have, like uh, with our grow dots, we already have enough phosphorus and potassium in there. Mm -hmm. What we might want is a little trick. You know, maybe we want something to like jasmonic acid or something like winter frost is different. That's going to tell the plant that it's about to, that, that it's senescing. It's, it's about to be over and to push as much oil out as possible. Something like that is different than just a PK boost. There's green sensation. This is my buddy Jaron has both these products. They're excellent products, and I understand how they work. Green sensation is one of those alcohols that is made through. Uh, I do think they're getting it through the seaweed, and they're separating this one alcohol out, this one ethanol out, and they're uh, they're using it at a specific time to create growth. So stuff like that is different than a PK boost. It's very interesting. Okay, so shout out to New New Millennium, not a sponsor of the show, but definitely a friend of the show. That's my two cents. Do you use Bloom Boosters or not? Let me know in the comments. And if you like this video, please hit that subscribe button and check out these other two videos YouTube's recommended for you.